In this video, we're going to talk about what a new listing notification is and how to set it up in Lofty. This is a super powerful way to uh, give market information that's very specific to your homeowners, the information they want to know. This is only for homeowners and not for renters. Uh, but let's say you own your home and you drive uh, home one day and uh, two doors up from your property, your neighbor has listed their home for sale. Aren't you curious? Don't you want to know what they listed it for, what that property looks like inside? Let's say a couple of months later, the sign goes down and you know it's sold. Don't you want to know what it's sold for? You bet you do. Um, and you're a real estate agent. Imagine what a homeowner does that's not a real estate agent, doesn't have the access you do. They are very curious about what's going on. Well, this notification will notify your friends, your family, your past clients, what's going on in their immediate area. And they're going to make think you look like a rock star. And we're going to be able to set it up so it all happens automatically in the background. So it's going to make more sense as we go along. But this is super powerful. So let's let's run through it. Again, this is for homeowners, not for renters. Uh, this is a new listing notification. It's a, a micro view of the contacts local real estate market, a super narrow view, and it's customized to each contact. It must be added one at a time due to these different search criteria. So you can't just throw this in. It has to be set up one by one. It'll take you a little time to set it up, but it's going to be so worth it because what is more powerful than knowing what your neighbor, your immediate neighbor's home just went on the market for or sold for, nothing. That's what everybody wants to know. And, and that's what will be applied to their CMA, wouldn't it? I mean, that is super powerful and relevant to them. All right, so homeowners will receive immediate notification when a close by, say a one block radius neighbor, either lists their home for sale or it goes, uh, it closes and it's sold. So let's walk through and talk about how we're going to do this. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up a contact record of the person that you want to add this new listing notification to. So let's go ahead and, well, I guess we'll walk through the steps. Uh, the first step is to uh, go to the top line in Lofty and select people. So this is the screen that you're going to see when you first log in. You're going to go up here to the left and click people to go into your CRM. And there it is. All right, what's next? Uh, well, this is optional to narrow down your search and speed up the process. You can click feature uh, filters and then search by a tag, say PCSY. So let's do that. Uh, so we're here in our database. Notice we have 12 contacts. It's a pretty small database. But if you had 100, 200, 300, 500, 1,000 leads in here, you're like, Mike, how would that happen? I don't know. Maybe you're getting a bunch of internet leads or something. Uh, if you have a lot of people in here, you're going to want to use these filters. So let me just show you what it is. Over here on the far right, there's a button that says filter. Well, let's go ahead and click filter. And when you do that, it pops open and says, all right, what do you want to filter? Uh, let's go ahead and say tags. And we're going to search for tags. And it says, hey, tags included one of, and we're going to uh, type in PCSY. So I opened it. And then down here by this little search feature, I put my a cursor and I'm going to type in uh, PCSOI and it found it and I'm going to uh, click that box. Notice it reduced this from 12 to 6. This is my PCSOI and that's looking pretty cool. Now I'll tell you that this particular item that we're doing, this, um, this uh, new listing notification is just for homeowners and on my list I've also got renters and I could just skip around, and, and it's a pretty small list here, and uh, avoid the renters. But I'm going to make it even easier by narrowing it down to just homeowners. So over here in my filter search, uh, right up at the top, I did search for tags. Now I want to search for um, lead type, lead type. And uh, I type that in, and I click on lead type. And it's going to say, OK, let's go to lead type now says lead type is equal to what? What do you want to do? I'm going to click in there and I'm going to run down the list and I want homeowners. So I'm going to click on homeowners. This is all assuming we put it in properly to begin with. Uh, but when I do that, I don't know if you noticed, this reduced down to four from six, which is pretty cool. So if I click on up in the upper right, it says all filters and there's two filters. If I click on this red button, 
it shows me what I filtered by. I had a tag of PCSOI. And then I also said it also have to be homeowners. And it reduced it down to a simple list of four for me now to add um, these uh, searches to. So I'm going to go ahead and just get this out of the way. And it, it keeps my search going, uh, my filter. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and go back through my work. All right. So uh, we're going to find next, we're going to find a contact by either scrolling through your list or entering a name into the search bar. So I can scroll through the list. Uh, I also, the search bar they're talking about is up here in the, um, it looks like a little magnifying glass. If I click that, I could look for a specific name. And if I do, it'll give me options and I could do it that way. But I'm just going to work through my list because I have a nice clean list of PCSY and homeowners. So I'm going to pick this first one, Tom, and I'm going to click on it and open it up. And there we go. There is Tom, who's one of our PCSY homeowners. Okay, so click on a contact name and open up the record, which we just did. And now we're going to add a new listing notification. Um, and here's what we're going to do. Uh, on the screen, on the top of the screen, we're going to go down and look for uh, engagement. So we're in uh, Tom's file, and we're going to go across. We've got activities, and then we have engagement. We'll click on engagement. You'll notice we have property alerts, market snapshots, market reports, and home reports here. And uh, what's it tell us to do next? It says, hey, look under market snapshots and click a new snapshot. So we're going to click the uh, add new market snapshot. And when we do, it opens up a search criteria. It says, hey, where do you want us to look to fulfill this report? And it creates this pretty cool map over on the left. And on the right, you can create some super specific search fields and criteria, which we're not going to do. We're going to keep this super simple. It's defaulted to the home address and zip code. And that's what that blue dot is, is the home address. And that's pretty cool. We are almost done. If, if, if we wanted to have a very wide area, this would be pretty cool. But we're going to make this a super narrow uh, search, uh, which will require a couple of extra steps. And let's walk through them. Um, so we're going to draw a uh, search area on that map. And here's how we're going to do it. Uh, on the map on the left, we're going to click the clear button in the upper right corner. So we're going to click this button up here. It says clear. And when we do, all this information is going to disappear and the map's going to pull back out. So let's go ahead and do that. We click here, clear, and it pulls all the way back out. We're looking at almost the whole state of Colorado now, which is too wide and confusing. So what we need to do now is go over here under basic information, and we're going to... Um, find the location by entering the zip code of the contact's home and wait for the auto population uh, below the entry box. So here's what we mean. So over here under basic info, if we go down a couple steps, there's one that says location. And then it says city, zip, subdivision, neighborhood, or school. And we're going to put in the zip code for the, the subject property, which is 80215, 80215. And then when it auto-populates and finds it, you have to go down and click what it found. It's not done yet. But when I click that, watch what happens to the map on the left. Now it's gone back into the area for us. Uh, it's not as narrow as it was before, but now it's showing the zip code 80215. And we can now search around in that map. Okay, the next step is the listing status. We're going to select both the sold and active. And so that's over here under basic info. Right below the location, it says listing status, and it's defaulted to sold in this report, which is nice. It would send out any properties that sold next to the, to the subject property. And that's cool, but I also want to add active when it goes on the market. So I'm going to click this box open. And when I do, it shows, hey, sold is selected, but nothing else. And I'm going to click active also. So I want sold and active. I want to know when it goes on the market and when it goes off the market, I want to notify my homeowner. So it went on and it went on a price of you know, 680000 and it sold for um, 660000 or 710000 or whatever they get to hear both pieces of info because this is their immediate neighbor. They want to know this. 
So they want to know when it went on and when it went off the market. And so I'm going to give them both those pieces of info and look like a rock star, look like a hero to them. All right. So I've done that. And now I've got it. I've got my map over here and that's what we're going to work on next. So uh, on the map on the left, it's going to show the zip code adjusted map, which we just showed you. And then we're going to use our mouse to plus and the plus minus buttons, plus the scroll around on the map to locate the property and surrounding homes. This is the part that will take you a little bit to get used to. I bet you had to do it to make it work. So I just happen to know our address is 2445 Lee Street. Uh, and, and I know it's in this area. And you may have to do a little bit of searching back and forth, but you should know your areas. And I, so what I'm going to do is I know it's right here. I can use my plus and minus down here in the lower right corner. For instance, if I click on it, it opens up some of these areas, uh, which is pretty cool. If I do it again, it's pretty neat. It's now showing the houses. Uh, however, I need something that's above what it's showing. So I'm going to uh, put my mouse up here higher and I'm going to click, left click and hold it down and then drag the map down. So I can get to the area that I'm curious about, which is right in here. Okay, so I got Lee Street and it's right in here is my subject property. So uh, I think I'll do one more click and see if it opens it up. Yeah, I did pretty good. So I got Lee Street here. And uh, here's the situation. This is my subject property um, right in the middle of the block. And what this report will do is it's going to here's the scenario that you got to think of in your mind and why we're doing this somebody comes home and they're cruising down off the main street down this street and they come down their street and this neighbor goes for sale or this one closes they want to know what happened on their immediate street because they live right here okay or maybe they leave and they come out this way and they see this home went up for sale or this one sold uh, closed out and the sign went down. They want to know what happened. And so we're going to help them learn that. And here's how. We're going to go up here to the upper right corner where it says draw. And we're going to highlight, just hover over until we see polygon. And we're going to select polygon. Now, we're going to go to one of the corners around this property. We're going to draw a map around this street, including the houses. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go to about here and I'm going to left click. And that's where it starts my line. And then I'm going to drag the line down to the next street. And I'm going to click again. And that created the next corner. And I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to click again. And that created the next corner. I'm going to go up right behind the properties until we get here. And I'm going to click this line. And I go all the way back to the beginning and click it. Boom. And now I have my map. And my map is showing this particular property. See, here's my subject right here. And now this home is for sale. This home's for sale. This home's for sale. They're going to find out what those, in this report they get, what that property is being listed for. And they're going to be pretty excited about knowing exactly what's happening in their neighborhood. There's nothing more valuable to you than knowing your own neighborhood stats. I know you would agree with that. Uh, being a real estate agent. And so we're going to share that. We're not going to share information over here on this street. Or let me pull out of here. We're not going to show anything sold over here, even though it's close. We're not going to show anything here or here or here or here. This report is just on their street. Okay. All right. So then uh, let's keep going. So we just drew that polygon. Uh, I clicked the draw button with the polygon and we drew the box around the property. We did use our left mouse to start, and I just showed you how we went around and created the shaded area. So that's all done. Uh, you can draw any shape. It doesn't have to be a square. I could have made that, uh, instead of four points, I could have five points or seven points. You can go back and forth if you have an awkward shaped area. Ours happen to be very pretty clean. Uh, the goal is to only include the homes on the same street as the subject property, right? Only include these properties on either side of their street as they're driving up and down the street they can see those properties um, now if it's a condo or townhome complex you're going to draw a map around the complex uh, and that's it just show their complex and if it's a massive complex maybe you'll just show their building uh, you'll, you'll let you make that decision 
And then the result in the upper left corner should be zero or a small number. Uh, right up here, we got a result of three. That was these three properties. See, we don't want to have 500 properties, and it won't be. This is very unusual, actually. <laughs> that's pretty a lot of properties for this one block. They actually have three. Uh, but that's cool. It's one, two, or three, just a couple. And then once we get that done, we're going to click Next. So let's go ahead and click Next. So we set up the filter, and now we're, we're going to click Next. And now it says, all right, let's go ahead and set up this uh, alert to tell us what to do. Um, all right, what's next? We're going to set up the alert settings. OK, now let's talk about what you're going to fill into the alert settings. We're going to fill in this data here. So let's go ahead and walk through the options. Let's see, alert name is for internal use only. The, your uh, person's not going to see it. Uh, only you. So below is our recommendations. So you know what it means in your dashboard. So we're going to go ahead and click this and we're going to copy neighborhood. This is our recommendation on what to name this alert. It's a neighborhood listing notice. And you go ahead and just copy and paste and put that in. So here's a really cool optional idea. You can choose whether you want to do this or not. But you could email yourself a copy of this notification. Remember, this is a super narrow notification. Uh, and all you do is check the send copy to myself. And that's right here under options. If you click send copy to myself, you will receive a copy of this notification of uh, a home going for sale or going sold right next to your person, right next to your PCSOI. And when you get that notification, if you decide to do this, you can reach out to them. Uh, when you get that email, you go ahead and give them a call or you can text them. And this is basically the message. You say, hi, this is Mike with Epic Realty. And I just thought you'd like to know that your neighbor just listed their home for sale uh, or just sold their home if they've just closed. And I just sent you an email with all the details. Let me know if you have any questions about it. Hope this is valuable. Again, you can call them in person. You can leave that on their voicemail or you could text that out to them. And you will look like a rock star. They're going to be like, wow, wow, Mike is really keeping me updated on my local area. What other agent is doing that? No other agent is doing that. So that's why I like this one so much. It's super powerful and hyper local. All right. You don't have to do that, but that's pretty cool. That's a super plus bonus. All right. What do we got next? Uh, next is uh, email sent to. You're going to confirm who... Uh, it was going to be sent to, and it's going to de default to all of the addresses in the file. So it's going to the primary and the secondary. You can decide if you want to send it to both or not. Uh, in our case, uh, I can't remember if this was a husband and wife or wife or husband. But anyway, uh, you could check that out and make sure that that's who you want it to go to. You could, If you don't want it to go to both, you could X out one or the other. Uh, and then we got subject. So let's go. What do we got next here on subject? For the email subject, below is our recommendation. And here you go. By the way, the default message will be just fine. It says your neighbor's home is for uh, just sold or just went active. But we got this one right here. This is pretty cool. You just type it in. Boom. Your neighbor's home is for sale. Details inside. And they're going to be saying, what is that? What's going on? And uh, uh, that's a pretty cool subject line message. All right, next we got frequency. You're going to want to enter instantly. So it says daily, not bad. But for these, we want to do it as soon as the information comes out. So instead of daily, click instantly. And you'll notice it got rid of the other options. And again, the reason to do that is these are just a very few properties per year, maybe one prop a year, two prop a year, maybe three prop a year. And that would be a heavy year. Uh, so we're going to get this information to them instantly. As soon as it goes on the market or as soon as it, it's sold and is registered as a sold in the MLS. And again, that other schedule disappeared. If it didn't, you would check all the days and send it out for all the times to make it happen fast. But as you noticed, it reduced it to sending it immediately. And that's what we want. Um, this is a very narrow search. Only a few homes per year, as we just mentioned, and that's why we can make it such a, a quick or instant notification. Because remember, these people aren't actively selling or actively buying. Once that's done, we'll go ahead and click Save. And boom, there it is. 
neighborhood listing notification is now in the market snapshots for Tom. Okay, next, to edit this, we'll go ahead and click the pencil uh, in a box symbol to the right of the alert. So we can modify this if for some reason it's not set up right or we want to change it. So right here, we could delete it or we could just uh, edit it. And we edit it, the whole thing pops open again. We have our area. Maybe we want to change the area. We could do that um, if we want. And, and once we got the area set up, remember that was the filter, then click Next. If maybe you wanted to change the name of the alert or who it's going out to or the title that you have here or the frequency, you can change any and all of that. And once you do, go ahead and click Save. Uh, and if you didn't, you change your mind, just X out of it and cancel, and it'll just retain the original right there. Uh, next, if you want to delete, uh, again, you can just click this uh, trash can right there, and it'll delete it. You're going to repeat this process for hall homeowners on your PCSOI contact records. So, uh, again, we were dealing with Tom here. And we could go down to the bottom uh, of our list and click the next one. And we can now help Jane with her address and do the exact same thing. Again, we go into engagements, we go into market snapshot. Uh, there's a zip code defaulted already for her. Um, uh, we would hit the clear button. And then we would go ahead and do the zip code. And I, this is, a, she's got a totally fictitious address. So I'm just going to make one up here, 802. 227. Uh, we'll do that zip code, uh, which will narrow it down on our map. And let's say we know the areas really well. Let's go ahead and look at this one. I, this is kind of interesting, caught my eye. This is Allison and the Zephyr Way, but it's kind of a loop. And I could see how somebody might drive backwards and forwards. Let's say they, they live right here at the bot at the end of this street. Uh, so let's go ahead and draw a quick map. We do a polygon. Since they could drive either way to get in or out, I'm gonna go ahead and make this a little bigger box. So I'll start here, I'll go here. I told you we could do multiple sizes uh, shapes. So instead of a total rectangle, I'll, I'll go ahead and make it a little more unique. Um, and then there, and we go all the way back to the beginning and bingo. Uh, there we go. Wow, that's interesting. We have four properties for sale. Our market is definitely slowing down which is uh, very interesting. And of course, our people would want to know that. So anything that happens for sale in here, if they're driving home and they're driving out or they're driving in or they're driving out, they're going to be very curious about it. So that's, again, a very nice narrow search. Uh, what else did we need to do? We needed to do have sold and we needed to add active. And so that's now done and, and it's ready to go. We just go to next. Uh, we go add our filter names. Let's see, we got all this to do really quick. We got a neighborhood listing notice. We'll copy and we'll paste. Uh, again, you decide whether you want to send it to yourself or not. Maybe you don't want to, uh, or maybe you start doing it. There's too many. You can take this off, but we'll go ahead and send a copy to ourselves. I think it's so powerful. And then we've got um, uh, the name. Here we go. Your neighbor's home is for sale. They're going to want to know that. Um, boom. And that's going to be our headline for frequency. We're going to change it to instantly. And we hit save and it's in there. That's how fast you can add one of these market snapshots for this neighborhood listing notice, this very tight little area. All right. So uh, that's how we're going to repeat it for each of our contacts, go all the way through. And now, by the way, we have automation set up and working for us. Lofty is going to automatically email that new listing notification for just listed, just sold forever until you turn it off. And remember, it's not going to be a nuisance because it's just a real small area. There's not going to be a lot of action in there, but it's enough that when it happens, they're going to be very curious about it. And it'll keep going until either contact unsubscribes or the record is deleted or you put it in archive or you turn it off. Otherwise, it's going to keep going. Okay, so we have a quick note here. And what this is telling us that above this note, all emails are fully automatic after you set them up. They're going to happen automatically on the schedules mentioned. But below this note, what we're going to talk about in the next video, uh, the email task becomes semi-automated. And we're talking specifically about a, a newsletter that you're going to create 
It's a branded newsletter. It's optional. You can choose to do it or not. But if you choose to do it, you will have a little bit of work to do each month once it gets set up. You're going to have a template. You're going to drop some information in. Probably take you about 30 minutes a month. But it's your choice. I just want uh, people to know that at this point. But we just went through how to do a bu -bu 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 new listing notification for our homeowners. Pretty cool. Pretty powerful stuff. Hope you enjoyed that video.